Hi, this is the third video for chapter three. In this video, we will use my lab and mastering in order to show or demonstrate how it is that we employ StatCrunch to compute necessary statistics or graphs that help us describe and display a quantitative variable. So I'm gonna head over to Pearson My Lab. And uh, one of the things that I would like to share with you is that from your Pearson My Lab, if you go to Course Tools, Document Sharing, under Exam 2 module, you will see all my notes for chapters three and four, all PowerPoint slides, all documents, all sample midterm questions that I have worked on and helped uh, create for your advancement through the content of chapters three and four. I hope you find those helpful. Aside from that, you may also go into the main menu under chapter contents and look at chapter three, where you will find a brief video from the authors of your textbook. Under video presentation and uh, it's a very useful outline of chapter three which is a very long chapter with a lot of different sections and I recommend that the video be used as an initial reading guide to your chapter three. Additionally the resources that you will find on canvas I hope help you outline your thoughts and your review of the content of chapter three so that then you can head over to the assignments and go into lab three and quiz three. Lab three is a very long lab. It's got 19 questions, but it actually takes very little time if you use StatCrunch. And so the use of StatCrunch will save you hours in this lab. In addition, there's a lot of extra credit points available to you in this chapter. So I encourage you to take advantage of the extra credit and take advantage of the use of StatCrunch in order to proceed with quantitative variables and engage these problems. For example, let me share the lab. In this first lab problem, We are looking at a marketing team for a company like Pandora or Spotify and how they may want to be able to describe uh, their customers to their marketing department. And so they take uh, out a survey and they ask uh, their customers or potential customers a lot of questions and they encourage the response rate to be high and they encourage the responses to be truthful by offering them a gift card of some sort or a credit toward their purchases of uh, services or uh, music songs or whatever uh, uh, to the people that they survey. One of the variables that they study is the variable age. So as you can see up on the top right hand corner here, we have 25 numbers, each representing the age of a client. And next to it is a, an icon that allows you to open the data in StatCrunch. And once all browser, once all browser settings are correct, you will see StatCrunch opening in a different tab and you will see the data form of the variable in question. Now, if I want to just study or just describe a variable by rank, I would go to the stat menu and proceed to the summary stats sub menu. Tables, again, is what we used in chapter two. In chapter three, we're using summary stats by column. I select the variable and then I can select the individual quartiles starting from the minimum. And then by command click or control click, I can pick quartile one. 
which is the next rank statistic in order ascending from smallest to largest. Then comes the middle value, then comes quartile three, and then comes the maximum. And after that, I can then select statistics that measure spread, like range and interquartile range. And all in all, I'm going to be computing these seven statistics by simply clicking Compute. And I will see the statistics pop up in a window. So I now know that the youngest person in my survey is 12 and that the oldest is 48. That half the people in my data set are older than 32 because the median is 32. That half the people in the data are younger than 32. That one quarter of people are younger than 26. Therefore, three quarters of people are older than 26. That the one quarter of people are older than 37 and three quarters of people are younger than 37. And that the middle half of my customers are vary in age by a decade, by about 11 years. And that the span of my entire data set from 12 to 48 is my range of clientele is uh, 36 years from youngest to oldest. If I wanted to visualize these values, I would go into the graph menu and pick a box plot. And by clicking on var1, I could then compute. And this is called a box plot because the middle half of the data is represented by a box. And when you click on certain aspects of the box, it shows you which values are in those subsets. and every subset contains one quarter of the data. If you leave the cursor long enough inside the box of the box plot, you will also see the values of the ages of different customers from the lower limit of 12 to the upper limit of 48. In this particular case, there are no outliers showing because no outliers seem to exist by the criteria of Tukey's method. And in addition to that, we can see the shape of the data is roughly symmetrical because from the center age of 32 up to 37 and down to 26, there seems to be roughly the same variation in age as you also can see that there's roughly the same variation in age on the top quarter and on the bottom quarter, albeit that the bottom half of the data seems to have a little more variability, but not substantially. So we usually call this roughly symmetrical. And that is how we would analyze how we would describe a variable by rank or place. When you close these output boxes in StatCrunch, they do not go away. They do not get deleted. Closing simply stores them in a place where the results are just hidden. So I can hide these results by rank and run another set of summary statistics just for variable one's mean, variance, and standard deviation. So I can begin to describe the data by amount, not by rank. And then I can basically state that the average customer is about 32 years old, give or take 10 years of age around that and usual amount of variation or deviation. So a standard deviation just tries to capture the average difference from the average value of a variable. And then I can graph something called a histogram of the variable. And the histogram would show me a little bit more detail than the box plot with regards to the frequency of values in the data. So it shows that people in their early 30s dominate the customer base. And as we depart from 32 years of age uh, and look at younger clients as well as older clients, we tend to see a spread of ages that are relatively equally spread around this center value. 
with a little bit more dispersion to the left or towards the lower end of ages than towards the older customers. So Spotify or Pandora customers average about 32 years of age and tend to have more variability in age on the downside than on the upside of things. And that's how you would use a histogram to then describe this variable called age. So in this video, we have covered both the by rank and by amount descriptions, statistical as well as graphical. And we have displayed and described a quantitative variable. Uh, through most of your lab assignment, you will be uh, using StatCrunch in this way to then go into the lab assignment and uh, answer questions about the problems at hand. So let me go into the problems. and go for describing or answering questions from this assignment. First question says, make a histogram that uses a bar width of 10 years, starting from the age of zero. And so every 10 years, there's gonna be a bar. The reason for the number 10 is because if you noticed in our description of the data, the interquartile range was 11, the standard deviation was a little less than 10. So 10 year ranges are a very good metric of variation in the data or of change of value from the middle value. So we'll very simply open the data in StatCrunch. Run a graph. and look at the histogram. Now, this histogram, as you can see, has bars of width five. So the way you adjust the bar width in graphs is you go to the options of the graph and you look for bins. And bins are the name given to these bars on the histogram. And you wanna start at zero and you want them to have a width of 10 years. So you can actually control where to start counting or describing values from and how wide each bar should be as part of the features of the graph. As you can see, the first bar has a height of two, then a height of seven, then a height of 10, and then a height of six. Two, seven, 10, six in frequency, up, up, down, and there are only four bars. So as I return to the question, As I return to the question after being in the after developing the histogram and modifying the options on the histogram to change the bins where they start from and how wide each bar is. As I return to the lab, then I can pick the correct answer, which is from two to seven to 10 to six, up, up, down.
and each question will ask you basically to modify the characteristics of the bar graph so that you can then obtain the correct view. Part B asks you to make a histogram of the data using bars of width five. So you just change back to the first graph in StatCrunch. And again, you do that by going to options, edit, and simply change the width of bars to match the requested bar width. And then the look or shape of the graph then indicates which answer to pick. What makes B different from C is that you're not making a histogram of the data that is usual. You're making a relative frequency histogram. So instead of measuring how many different people are of different ages, you're measuring what percentage of the people in the survey are of different ages. You'll notice no change in the shape of the data, whether you're describing counts or percentages of people. And then you are asked to develop a stem and leaf plot of the data where all you're doing is sorting how old people are from youngest. So a 12 year old and a 14 year old would be stems of decades and leaves of individual years. So the one stands for 10 years of age and then the two and the four stand for additionally two over 10 and four over 10 years. So 12 year old, a 14 year old. And as you recall, the frequency of people in the data went from two to seven to 10 to six. So the only graph that could be right in this case is graph A. And uh, bingo, two points. So other language that uh, comes to bear in the description of the shape of data is the language about modality of the data. A unimodal data set is one that has one peak, like this one. And having one peak means that there's a central point by frequency which establishes that most people are in their 30s here. And how the data is in shape can be described as roughly symmetric, but usually with a slight tendency towards the left, towards the youngest people, not towards the oldest people. And uh, there are no outliers because there aren't super old or super young people in the data. That would be suspicious in, a, in an account by Spotify to see a two-year-old with a Spotify, Spotify account or, or a 90-year-old with a Spotify account. The same activity repeats, but this time, instead of using people's ages, we're using how much people purchase at a store. And so the same procedures are also used in tandem to compute quartiles or to compute means or standard deviations or graphs that then describe center or spread around the center or locations in the data or shapes of the data by frequency or by how far from the center of the data you find numbers. If you find more variability from the middle up, you call that skew to the right. From the middle down, you call that skew to the left. I hope that this video was helpful in helping you proceed with your demonstration in lab three and in quiz three of your acquisition of this knowledge. Have a nice day. Thanks. Thank you.